Today here on Wednesday's Words, it's the 2018 Detroit Auto Show, also known as the North American International Auto Show. We're going to give you our thoughts, our opinions, and what we see for the future of this thing. Coming up next. So as we film this, it's Tuesday afternoon and press days are wrapping up here for the auto show for this year here in Detroit. And for the second year in a row, a little disappointing. Um, not a lot of reveals. There was a lot of off-site stuff and that is maybe one of the issues that really needs to be addressed going forward. But let's talk about what was debuted here at the auto show. Not necessarily in any particular order, but get it written down just to make sure we go through these correctly. Uh, Saturday, Chevy kicked things off the new Silverado. It's nice, it's better, uh, and with Ram debuting their new 1500 pickup truck, the next 12 to 18 months are going to be very interesting in the half-ton truck category. Uh, not only due to the two new entries, but also Chevy is going to be introducing an inline-six diesel. Ram, not immediately, it'll probably be 12 months, they're bringing out a new diesel as well, and of course Ford announced a diesel for their half-ton trucks as well. Yeah. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, Ford has kind of had the easy run here for a while, and now that Ford and Chevy have got new vehicles in there, it's going to be interesting to see if Ford is able to maintain their, um, their hold. Uh, speaking of Ford, they debuted the new Ranger pickup truck. It, a, doesn't appear to be as big as the Colorado and Canyon, and that's a good thing. The Colorado and Canyon are tagged as mid-sized vehicles, or mid-sized trucks, but they're very much old, you know, full-size trucks from 20 years ago. The Ranger is not the Ranger of the past, but it does appear to be more truly mid-sized, so that's good. Uh, the one they showed off was a limited, limit yet, so it was a limited trim, and the interior is a bit disappointing, to be honest with you, as far as the materials. I mean, it looks nice, and from five feet it looks nice, but when you get in and you start touching and, you, and you're poking around, um, I'm not sure. Maybe it'll depend on what they price it at, but I have a feeling that the, uh, the, the Ranger in limited trim, and this was an FX4, it'll be high 30s, which sounds bad, right until the, you understand the point that the average transaction price on an F-150 now is something around $56,000. So it fits in fine in those people who have said for years that, well, we don't need a Ranger because the F-150. Now, F-150 priced itself way out of the Ranger category years ago, and the only people who buy stripped out Ranger, or stripped out F-150s are municipalities or occasional work trucks. Um, the other news that was kind of interesting from Ford is they've announced that there will be a Bullet Mustang. They're doing that edition, and they brought out Molly McQueen who is the granddaughter of Steve McQueen. And it's not Chad McQueen's daughter, it's Chad's sister's something like that. I don't know, it's, she's a McQueen, she's been in like three things. She's got no real creds, but whatever. Um, but they brought her out to introduce the bullet because it's gonna be the 50th anniversary of the movie in 2018. Uh, the other thing that was cool is that the original movie car was also shown off, which I guess they did in 2003, I don't remember. Um, but it was cool to see it and the fact that it's unrestored uh, to me that was really cool I mean it's got rust holes and stuff and it's not a it's not it's not it, it, it someone didn't treat it as special which is kind of cool actually uh, what else do we have here that was uh, pre-announced uh, Mercedes did the new G-Wagon so this is essentially the first time it's been redone in 30 years and it looks very similar it's as they said they don't want to screw up an iconic shape and I don't think they have. Uh, it's nice. The interior is super premium. It's gonna be a $100,000 plus truck, as you'd expect, but it's nice. Uh, the presentation they had for it was, was very cool. It was in the Michigan Theater, which if you've seen the movie Eight Mile and they go to park, I think it's early in the movie, and they go in this parking structure and it looks like an old theater, well, that's what it was, because it actually was an old, the old movie theater. And, concerts and stuff and it's a long story if you want to look at it just google michigan theater detroit and you'll see the whole history and room porn and all that but uh it was a really cool event and they brought in arnold schwarzenegger and stuff like that so yeah it's a nice truck it really is uh, so then we get to that was sort of all the pre announced stuff just running through my list here so lexus kicked things off with their lf1 concept which 
essentially is going to be a styling design and kind of some future tech for down the road. It's a nice looking vehicle, but it's a crossover. Yeah, it was nice. We talked about Ram with the F-150. BMW showed off an X2. Whoopee. And if you see it, you're like, so why don't you just have a sedan or a five-door hatchback? You're going to call this a crossover? I mean, it sits this much higher than like a five-door hatchback would, but it's a crossover. It's, yeah, get it away from me. It's not interesting at all. Um, VW showed off their new Jetta, and if you've seen the old Jetta, the styling was okay. The interior left a lot to be desired. This new one, not only does it look better, but the interior is much nicer. Uh, again, they're showing off their high-level trim one, so it's going to look a lot nicer. How, what the base trim levels are going to look like inside, hard to say, but the general styling is, is nice. Uh, let's see. And Nissan Infiniti, Nissan and Infiniti both showed off uh, crossover concept vehicles. And this will go on to one of the other things we always harp on. There's not nothing spectacular as far as concept vehicles, nothing super far reaching. Like the Lexus one, the LF1, you can see that being in production, right? Uh, the Nissan and the Infinities, okay, that was a bit of a reach, and at least it was interesting, and then really nice styling for both. And Infinities styling is going in a very interesting and very cool direction. They're going for more of a minimalist look, and they're not getting with 100 creases and waves. It's, it's, it's really tasteful. We'll, hopefully, we're, you're, we're rolling in some pictures here for you to see as we're, as we're talking about these things. Um, Acura. We'll, we're going to dedicate a whole Wednesday's words to them here in the next few weeks. But um, they showed off their RD, RDX concept. It's essentially a production-ready vehicle. So it's it's their mid you know, so it's a small crossover, C-segment crossover. Very nice. The styling, finally, with Acura, is fixed. The interior is beautiful. The materials are very nice, and they're doing this for what they call 4D sound system because it has four speakers kind of in the... In the roof there um, it's got a complete glass panel roof and it's the speakers are kind of in the in the side pillars not directly above you but kind of an atmos kind of feel but yeah, it's it's nice it's really well done and uh, we got some things to say about Acura that they may have found as Honda has found their mojo um, Acura is not far behind on that Toyota showed off the Avalon it's it's better looking still not a fan of what they're doing with the front end styling the interior is good and hold on to your horses apple carplay really after everyone harping on them for what four years and like no 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 entune entune is better i think after several hundred thousand if not a million people saying apple carplay but they didn't mention android auto maybe that's coming shortly i don't know but if it's coming in Avalon, it'll be coming down the road in other vehicles probably over the next couple of years. So at least, at, not necessarily the hugest Apple CarPlay fan, but it's a symbolized interface. And then uh, Jeep showed off their new Cherokee, which is sort of not new, but it's a, a mid-cycle refresh. They've changed up the front end styling a little bit. Uh, there's going to be a new engine combination in there. So it looks better. Uh, that's always been the biggest thing with the Cherokee, right? No one liked the front end styling. This one, eh, it's an evolution of it, but it does look uh, significantly better. And the new two liter turbo with, I think it's gonna have uh, some kind of e-boost in it as well. It's gonna be interesting. They're not talking completely about the drivetrain stuff yet, but it'll be coming out shortly. The interior again is, is much nicer than in previous uh, Cherokees. So well done, Jeep. So overall, uh, what do we think of this year's show? Well, part of the problem is, oh, sorry. Let's go back before we get into that. Lamborghini showed off the Urus, small invite off campus. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't have a problem with the Urus like most people are going to because Lamborghini has a history with uh, SUVs, uh, and with the LM002, but people say, well, yeah, but that was like muscular, Hummer style, you know, style over the top where this is more, fashion crossover I, I get it but you're not gonna leave that I mean people are throwing money at this stuff you don't leave three hundred thousand two or three hundred thousand dollars laying on the table you just don't not when you're selling six thousand cars a year at, at most if that yeah about six thousand cars um, so overall what do we think of this year's show as we said at the top disappointing again uh, 
the there was literally one OEM press conference today. That was Jeep. And all the OEM press conferences yesterday were done by 2.30, and then it was some suppliers and other technology stuff. Now there's a ton of conferences going on for automobility, which is great. Um, they are embracing the, the group that runs the auto show here are really trying to embrace the forward thinking, autonomous, uh, electronics, integrated everything. Uh, and there's a whole section of the basement of essentially suppliers and prototyping stuff dedicated to that down in the basement, walk around, eh, it just not, I mean, we're a completely different world down there and can't really comment on much down there. Other than we walk down there, there's some real high level PhD stuff going on down there and that's above us, so it's fair, fair play on that. The one thing that the show has to worry about going forward is the fact that so many of the OEMs are taking things off campus or early, and like in Ford's case, it was on, it was here, but it was Sunday night, uh, not during the regular auto show. And from a PR standpoint, from from the OEM, totally get that, right? Because if you're jammed in with all the other press conferences, you get two minutes to shine, really. I mean, each press conference is about 15 minutes, and then everyone runs to the next one, and everything gets jammed up. And hey, there's not a lot. I mean, unless you have something really special. Um, there's not going to be a sustained buzz where if you do something off campus or pre-announce you know the saturday the sunday events at least you get four to eight hours right and for the money that a lot of these companies put into the launches that makes a big difference from an roi standpoint the problem is is it takes away from the main show and as more and more of the stuff gets pulled out uh, less and less people come i mean the floor seems empty this year there's been years past where it's jam-packed and you're hard-pressed to get any kind of time in a vehicle or get close for photos and we really didn't have that much of a problem this year so one of the things the oems need to take into account is yes they are in their right when they're launching a new vehicle or a new model or a refreshed model to get as much buzz and as much time as they can in front of and in front of people and eyeballs but if at the same time they're pulling away from the show and it kills the show and you don't get the same amount of people, the same quality or level of people coming to the show to cover it, have you cut off your nose to spite your face? And I think there's a lot of that being talked about. And it's not just myself, we've spoken with a lot of different colleagues and a lot of people coming with the same general impressions. So. Disappointed, had a lot of expectations for this year, especially since last year was so flat. But again, this year, just, I mean, it's all right, but nothing memorable, nothing special. And that's a problem, especially when all of the buzz right now and all of the media is talking about what's going in the future, 20 years down the road, which everything, everyone's coming tomorrow, but it's not, it's, it's interesting. So one of the other things we'll talk about, I think in, in the next, few weeks on a Wednesday's words is crossovers and trucks why are they popular and why is it a good thing looking forward because when I heard some of the bills of what some of this autonomy and some of this future tech is costing to develop it's a good thing some of these companies are selling 300 400 thousand units of trucks and crossover and stuff like that so anyways that's gonna wrap it up for this year 2018 Detroit Auto Show here and hope you enjoyed our coverage. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, do all the things that you do, and we'll see you again next time on normalstrip.net.